When my clients tell me what they dislike the most about Windows 10, at the top of almost every single list without exception is the Start menu. Most find it cluttered, useless, and definitely, definitely not user-friendly. In this video, we are going to look at changing that perception with a few key tips and tricks into organizing the Start menu so that it suits your preference. A good place to start is with the options for the Start menu. Click on Start, go into Settings, look for Personalization in this list, click on Start on the left-hand side here, and here you have all the options for the Start menu. So let's go through these quickly. Show more tiles on the Start. If this is turned on and you click on your Start, you can see I'm able to do four medium-sized tiles in a group width-wise. If I turn that off, which is the default, it only has three across. The second option here, Show Apps List in the Start menu. What that is, when you click on Start, this is your Apps List on the left-hand side here. If we turn that off and we click on Start now, you'll see the Apps List is reduced to the small icon on the top left. When we click on that now, you can see all your apps, but all the tiles disappear. So if you want a more simplified Start menu, certainly turn that particular one off. Show recently added apps. When you click on that, anything you've just recently added to your computer, any programs, that will all show up in the list here. Personally, I really don't like that option, so I generally have that one off. Show most used apps when you click on that. This one could be handy. All the programs that you've recently opened will show up in a list here. If you see something in here that you really don't want, you can right click on it, click on more, and do not show in this list, and it removes it from your most used. Now, you can certainly make use of this. I prefer to use the icons on the right-hand side or the tiles on the right-hand side. Show suggestions occasionally in the start. This one I recommend always, always leave it off. This is strictly advertising from Microsoft so that they can recommend apps to you based on your preferences or based on the things that you use. You start full screen. This one is handy if you have a tablet or use a lot of apps. When you turn that on and click on Start, you'll notice now it takes up the entire screen. I personally find that one really tough to work with, so I generally don't use that myself. Show recently opened items in jump lists on Start or the taskbar and in File Explorer Quick Access. What that is, is it's a multi-setting, basically. For all your icons at the bottom here, which is your taskbar, all your icons here, if you right click and say Firefox or Chrome or any of these, you will see the last websites that you had visited will be showing up in this list. To me, again, that's a privacy issue, especially if somebody else uses the same computer, they can go in and view exactly what you just opened. So I generally leave that off as well. This choose which folders appear in the start, this is actually quite handy. When you click on start, all of these on the left hand side here are the folders. So if you want to view the File Explorer from there, turn that on. Now you'll see we have File Explorer. Same thing with any of these other settings like downloads, music. You'll see this list can get pretty long, but that all depends on what you want in your list. Okay, let's move right on to resizing the Start menu, which most people don't realize you can do. If you click on Start, you'll see I've got a number of different sized icons here. And there's a big reason for the different sizes. Now, some icons, if you right click on them and you go resize, you can get small, medium, wide, and large. On some icons, you'll only get a couple of options, which is small and medium. These are small, where I have my Microsoft Office. These are your medium ones. The one here that's maps, that's your wide icon. So if you can see, you've got the wide option. And the one that I have my weather on, that is the large icon. If you drag your mouse over to the right hand side. You can see the cursor changes. Same thing at the top. And if you drag it into the corner here, what we can do is drag it over to the right and you can see the groups now move over, they shift. If we drag it up, we also view more at the same time. Now, here's something you have to keep in mind. Your width for your start menu is either three groups wide with four tiles per group or four medium tiles width per group. So this one here you can see is four medium tiles across. If you had changed your option under personalization start and you change this to 
only three. Now if I drag it over, you can see we can go four groups wide, but you can only do three tiles or three medium tiles per group. So it's either 12 medium tiles wide, six large tiles wide, or 24 small tiles wide if you're viewing more tiles in the Start menu. Now, if you want to organize your Start menu, when you click on Start, all these apps on the left-hand side here, if you see this apps that you don't want, such as by default, there's usually a 3D viewer, there's various other apps, any one of these you can right-click on. And if it's got the option, you can right-click and uninstall that particular app with the option right here. It's really handy for the default apps such as Solitaire or any of those games that you really don't want. So go through this list when you first set up your computer. Right click and uninstall anything that you know you are not going to use. If you're a typical, a typical computer guy like myself, the icons in that start menu are stored in two locations. One is the system location, which is Program Data, Microsoft Windows, Start Menu Programs. Here you can see all the start menu groups that you have. You can certainly organize them in here if you want. I personally would not recommend it unless you're really, really comfortable doing that because you could mess things up and you could also end up with duplicates when you go to install an update, suddenly you'll have it in, an I, in a folder that you may have created and now you'll have a duplicate when it reinstalls it again. So like I say, you can certainly change that or you can just leave it as the default. The other option here is in app data, which is the default user roaming profile. Here is the specific user folders as well. So if you find there's a program you cannot remove from the list, because quite often manufacturers include all this garbage that most people will never use. And usually it's just a shortcut. It's not the actual program until you click on it, but it won't let you uninstall it because it's not actually installed. It'll be in one of these two locations. So you can certainly come in here and delete those icons without any problems. If you click on your start, all these tiles are on the right hand side here. If you don't want it here, such as say, for example, I didn't want maps, you can right click on this and go unpin from start. That's how you would organize your tiles according to what you want. You also have the option, if there's an entire group here as an example, you can delete that group, which I'll show you in just one sec. First, on the left, any program that you have that you want to put in your quick links or in your tile here, right click on it and just go pin to start. Now you can drag these around to whichever group you want them, whichever position on the screen, we can drag them over, move them back or do whatever you want, right click, resize, so on and so forth. So if you want to delete the whole group, Move your mouse up to just above that particular group. Right click on this and go unpin group from the start. This does not remove the program. It simply removes the tiles that are on the right hand side here. And if you're like me, I like this area really nice and tidy. So I remove all the defaults that Microsoft typically installs on it. You also have an option as some of these tiles are changing, rotating, different things are flashing by and it can get really distracting. Right click on those particular tiles and you have an option under more, which says turn live tile off. So if you turn it off, it won't automatically update and keep changing on you. Personally, I like my weather one. I always turn it on so I know what the weather is. Another option you have is if, for example, you're out of space in your start menu. What I could do is if I drag, say, Word on top of Outlook, it creates a new group. And I could do this with all my Microsoft Office apps. Say we're dragging them into one group here. If I get it to resize properly. Okay, there we go. So now we can see, we can reduce the number that we have. And here's a group. Now, if we want to resize that group to medium, now we can drag all these other ones in there quite easily. So now you have a Microsoft Office group. When you click on it, all the actual tiles drop below it and you can start the program. If you want to remove an icon from that group, just expand it like I did here, drag the icon that you want out of the group and drop it onto, your, onto the start menu wherever you might want that icon to be. So that's a really handy option if you like grouping your stuff together so you can have more on the start without losing track of everything because there's too many tiles. Anyway, this is just a quick overview of the start menu. Hopefully it's been of use to you. By all means, if it has, do take us just a moment and give us a good thumbs up at the bottom there. So until next time, folks, 
Take care. Have, you, have yourselves a fantastic day. Bye now.